right? So web supply, uh, web supply, right? Uh, so in the PSLE syllabus, uh, these are the uh, learning objectives that you need to know under the topic of web supply. All right. First, you must be able to trace the energy pathway from the sun through living things. How energy is transferred from the sun to the living things. And you must be able to differentiate between food chain and food web. You must know what is food chain and you must know what is a food web. All right. And you must be able to identify the roles of the various organisms in the food web and food chain, such as the food producers, Okay, the consumers, decomposers, predators, prey in the food chain and the food web, right? Okay, okay. Uh, the sun, as we know, the sun is our main source of energy. Uh, without the sun, all the plants and all animals will not be able to live, right? Uh, so the sun is a main source of energy for all the organisms, and only plants are able to track light from the sun directly to make food. Humans and animals, we are not able to make food directly from the sun, but plants, they are able to make food on their own through the process of photosynthesis, okay, by trapping the light energy from the sun. Okay, but all the other organisms get energy directly from the, uh, indirectly from the sun. Okay, later I'll show you how. And the energy of this organism can be traced back to the sun. Okay, uh, producers, what are producers? Or sometimes you call them food producers. Okay, basically, in the food web, plants are the food producers. Okay, because they can produce their own food. And plants, as we know, under the topic of uh, photosynthesis, uh, uh, we know that plants, the leaves contains chlorophyll, which is a green pigment found in the leaves, which tracks the sunlight. Okay, under the topic of cells, you learn about... Uh, uh, you learn under the topic of cell, the, the different parts uh, of the cell. Okay, uh, can you tell me the parts of the cell uh, which makes or which is responsible for trapping sunlight? Anyone? The chloroplast. Okay, very good. So the chloroplast uh, in the plant, in the leaves, track the sun energy. Okay, so that enables the plant to make food. Okay, so chlorophyll traps light energy from the sun so that the leaves of the plant can make food. And plant can also make their own food, thus they are known as producers or food producers. Okay, what about consumers? The unlike producers, consumers cannot make their own food. So other than the plants, other animals, we are consumers. Okay, they eat plants or other animals or both. Consumers that eat plants get their food from the producers directly. Okay, they are called plant eaters. Okay, plant eaters are consumers that eat only plants. Okay, for example, you can see in this food chain, okay, the locust here is a plant eater. Right? Or sometimes we also call them herbivores. Okay, herbivores are plants which consume or which eats only plants. All right? Now, plant and animal eaters are consumers that eat both plant and animals, and we call them omnivore, right? And animal eaters only, they are called, okay, they are called carnivore, okay? okay? When plant eaters or plant and animal eaters feed on plants, the energy stored in plants is passed on to them, okay? And these consumers get energy from the sun indirectly. So you can see here, food producer, they make food by trapping the light energy from the sun, carbon dioxide and water in the process of photosynthesis. Okay, and the primary consumers, you can see here, the red fits on the plant. Okay, so energy is transferred on to this primary consumer and then transferred on to the, the secondary consumers and so on. Okay, and you can see here at the end, all the organism dies and it goes back as nutrients to the, to the plants. Okay, next we are going to look at uh, prey and predator. Okay, what's, who are the prey and who are the predators? So animal eaters that hunt and kill other animals for food are called predators. And animals that are killed and eaten are known as the prey. So you can see here, these two animals, 
Uh, the cheetah here is the predator, and this animal here is the, is the prey. Right? A food chain. What is a food chain? Okay, the relationships between food, uh, the producers and consumers can be written in the form of a food chain. So when a plant is eaten by an animal, which is in turn eaten by another animal, a food chain is formed. Okay, so you can see this as a simple food chain here. Right, the plant here, and you can see the arrow. Uh, take note on of the direction of the arrow. Eh? You must have the arrowhead. Eh? When you are asked to draw food chain, make sure you have the arrowhead, and the arrow is pointing to the pointing to the right direction. So here, the arrow pointing to the rabbit here means that this plant, this producer is eaten by the rabbit. Likewise, here the rabbit here is eaten by the tiger. Right, so this is a simple food chain. Right, and take note, uh, the food chain always begins with a producer, right, uh, which is a plant. So if you are given a food chain or a food web, right, so first identify who is the producer. Right, very simple. How to identify who is the producer? By looking at the arrow. Okay, so a producer will have all the arrows or all the arrows pointing upwards. Okay, meaning that here, the plant here eaten by the rabbit. Okay, all the arrows from the producer must be pointing upwards. So it shows how energy is transferred from one organism to another. Eh? So food chain shows how it is energy is transferred from one organism to another. And plants can be eaten by more than one type of plant eaters. Thus, a plant can form more than one food chain. For example, in this example, the rabbit eats the this grass and likewise the horse also eat the grass here so you can see here uh, in the uh, actual environment okay you do not see a simple food chain but a series of food chain which will form into a food web right okay? we go into food web later on eh? okay so you can see another examples here predator usually eat more than one type of prey thus predator can form more than one food chain so you can see the grass eaten by the zebra and the zebra is eaten by the tiger here. And in another food chain, the grass, same grass eaten by the giraffe, and this giraffe eaten by the tiger. So you can see here two chain. And if you put them together, right, in a community, you will have a food web. Okay, so you can see it starts from the grass. The grass is eaten by the giraffe, the giraffe here as well as eaten by the zebra. And in turn, the zebra is eaten and the giraffe is also eaten by the tiger. Okay, and you can see here, two food chain forms a food web. Okay, so in any community, okay, you can see multiple food chains, food chain which is interconnected to form a food web. All right? And we also know that there are different kinds of community. Okay? You can see the grassland. This is probably a typical grassland community. You have a garden community, you have a forest community, you have ocean community, okay, sometimes you have the pond community, and each community will have their different sets of organism, and it forms food web, uh, which has a series of food chains which are interconnected with one another, okay? okay. This is an, another example of a food web, a much more complex food web. Okay. In real life, in the actual community, you will see hundreds and thousands of different types of organisms. Okay, and each of them okay, can be linked together okay, to form a series of food chain. And when you put them together, okay, they form a food web. Okay, you can see here, all right, take note, huh? this is the, the food web. And straight away, you can identify huh, that this flower here or this plant is a producer. Now, how do you know this is the producer? Very simple. Look at the arrow. Okay, the arrow all pointing upwards. Okay, you can see this arrow pointing outwards here. This arrow pointing outwards here. This arrow pointing outwards here. And this arrow pointing outwards here. Okay, and you can see that this is the food producer. Okay, of course, in this example, it's quite easy because they show you, they show you diagrams. Huh? But in the exams, on your test paper, sometimes they give in the form of letters or symbols. Okay, so they just put here probably A, B, and C. Okay, and they are pointing upwards. So you can say that it is a, okay, it is a, a food producer. Okay. 
Now think about it, what will happen to the other populations in the community if the population of producer increases? Okay, let's take a look at this example here. Okay, you have uh, in a grassland, okay, anyone can answer? What happens if uh, the population of the producer increases? Anyone? Let's take a look here. What happened to the other population in community if the population of producer is? Answer? Okay, let's go back to this example. Huh? All right. Uh, this is a plant. What happened when the population of this plant increases? Adanya, what happened? Okay, population of rabbit also increases. So what happened when the population of rabbit increases? The population of the tiger also increases, right? So this will be happening in the in the short term. All right, this will be happening in the short term. Now what happened if the population of a producer decreases? Okay, if the population of the producer decreases, let me change to other color. Okay, the population of this producer decreases. Okay, the population of rabbit will also decrease. Okay, and the population of tiger will also decrease. Okay, why? Because when the plant decreases or the producer here decreases, there will be less food for the rabbit to feed on. Okay, so the population of rabbit will decrease and in turn, okay, when less population of rabbit exists, so the less food for the tiger to feed. Of course, this is assuming that this is the, uh, this is the only uh, source of food for this organism. Okay. Now, what about here? Let's take a look at this example here. What happens when the, say, the population of tiger decreases? Anyone can tell me what happened when the population of tiger decreases? Okay. Yeah. In this example, guys, what happened when the population of tiger decreases here? Okay, the population of zebra increase. Okay, very good. What about the population of uh, the, the zebra? Okay, both zebra and the giraffe will increase. Now, what will happen when both the, the zebra and the giraffe increase? What will happen to the population of grass? Yeah, very good. Okay, the population of the grass will, will decrease, right? Because more and more uh, zebra and giraffe uh, population, as the population of zebra and giraffe increases, okay, they will be, they will be competing for, for food. Okay, which is the grass, and what happens here? The population of grass will decrease. Okay, then what will happen then when the population of this producer decrease? What will happen to the zebra and giraffe in the longer term? Right? Okay, very good. Huh? So when the population of this producer decrease, okay, in the longer term, okay, until there will be no more grass or producer okay and the population of giraffe and the zebra decrease and eventually when the population of zebra and giraffe decreases population of tiger will also decrease all right yes okay eventually it leads to leads to an extinction all right so you need to be able to analyze uh, from a food web or a food chain okay, what happens to the to the population when any population in the food chain or any organism in the food chain either increase or decrease okay all right let's recap huh? plants are producers they trap light from the sun to make food consumers cannot make food okay who are the consumers the non-plants huh? like animals and humans okay we are consumers and they get food directly from uh, from the producers or indirectly from the from the producers. The okay, plant eaters 
or herbivore, plant and animal eaters, omnivore and animal eaters. Carnivore are the consumers. Animal that hunt other animals are known as the predator. The hunted animals are known as the, as the prey. The food chain shows the relationship between producers and consumers. And several interconnected food chain in the community forms a food web. Okay? Alright, any questions?